three key people who are responsible for the genocide of hindus i want to call it quote on quote it is genocide of hindus okay the problem is just before elections they banned my channel exactly just before elections they banned my channel and absolutely no support from ministry see if minute if it minister says hey bloody youtube just put back the string channel they must put it because it's just a company making profits and government has full authority on it uh, when we looked at every transaction every right agni veer rights article 370 right everything is to take it connects directly to george soros hmm. then he is a guy who has a record of funding protests in every part of the world even farmers protest exactly without george soros it wouldn't have happened <laughs> after i studied a lot then i understood modi ji is the correct person for india because there is one style of beating that you know if i uh, if i beat you you will not even realize that i have beaten you and <laughs> even after one week even if i tell you i am the one who kicked you on your back you will say no 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 you are a good guy this is yeah, modi ji style of kicking people <laughs> and he is doing it very professionally all the time first thing they should focus on is invest on social media bloody invest on social media which you already have did i mean in 2014 they used social media to the core they were very good at it are we underestimating rahul gandhi and congress party and who is behind them are we uh, just uh, closing our eyes and just calling him pappu he doesn't know anything rahul gandhi we are not underestimating he is actually a pappu but people behind that we are underestimating <laughs> Are there yes. any slightest of possibilities of Congress returning to power in 2029? 100% there are chances. Sir. I don't want to make funny there statements. There are chances. Yeah, I don't want Actually, to make funny. Actually, this is a really shocking statement from you. Exactly. No. I want to ask you about the recent Bangladesh crisis which has happened, and Sheikh Hasina has left the country, and we can see the same pattern. we repeated in india too yeah <laughs> in bangladesh there was uh, the economy was progressing india is also the economy is progressing there was a mm. strong leader who was nationalistic here also there is a strong leader who is nationalistic so there yeah. there, are, there are a lot of similarities between india and bangladesh and yeah. i want to ask you what let a uh, lesson india needs to learn from bangladesh see it's very important to observe the political situation in bangladesh and political situation in india then people will uh, understand what lessons uh, they need to learn the first thing is when a political party is giving you a lot of freebies and posing uh, as if it is developing you will not understand the background activity of that particular uh, party if you look at the background activity of the party because of thanks to the nationalist youtubers and everybody for coming out and uh, speaking they have exposed each and every uh, destruction i mean the movies also article 370 kashmir files and all these things all that they have done is hindu genocide in the past you know the congress party looting temples money and hindu genocide. you look at the kind of work uh, uh, policies they made and the temple policies they made. no less than you know horrible the situation of the hindu priests is almost like beggars now and big thanks to modi ji now it is all being uh, renovated and all these things let me focus on bangladesh i'll explain through the political situation over there what okay. happened is uh, information that is available in the youtube is very less whoever the uh, mainstream media whatever the stories that are saying is actually very less but uh, i'll give you a complete picture sure. there are like three key people who are responsible for the genocide of hindus i want to call it quote on quote it is genocide of hindus it is targeted genocide of hindus if you want to put it in simple terms and now there are three people who are responsible the first i'll tell you the people and after that the companies uh, sorry the nations and the firms which are responsible for it uh wakaru zaman people know that you know the, he is bangladesh army chief yeah. sheikh asina's uh, cousin in law yeah uh, he is a relative also and then he is the backstabber before the protests uh, broke out she ordered him to you know uh, handle the protesters to open fire she said open fire he refused it and there is no reason to it and uh, nobody knows why he, uh, he did like that and then he denied uh, the orders he denied the orders 
army okay. people you know they did not you know on that day if they open fire and they uh, control the protesters this situation wouldn't have occurred uh, this much damage wouldn't have occurred hindu genocide she doesn't have to run away from the country at all okay and he is the first person to announce that uh, this sheik sheik hasina oster she po- yeah. he posted okay. he is the first man wakar us zaman he is the first person okay number 2 guy naid islam student leader um, everybody knows him he is there in every video every protest you know mm-hmm. mobilizing until the last moment uh, till sheik hasina left the country he led the protest mm-hmm. in entire bangladesh okay and then uh, the third person this comedy guy everybody knows mohammed yunus <laughs> <laughs> bangladesh nobel laureate yeah there are so many acquisitions on him that people do not know and rahul gandhi will never uh, uh, introduce this to public he congratulated mohammed yunus yeah that's what they do and you know mohammed yunus is a um, he was accused of extorting rural women Hmm. he is known for poor he is known as there is some quote that people poor mans something uh, banker oh. poor mans right poor man something i mean uh, but he is known for extortion uh, torturing rural women corruption and is more than like you know 100 plus cases against him now poor he is a banker yeah that's what he is now he is the chief advisory uh, of the this you know interim government he will serve as probably the caretaker leader in bangladesh right now yeah okay. now let us look at the major forces that are involved in uh, yeah. collapsing the uh, regime change what has happened in bangladesh is nothing but a regime change and uh, i want you to observe a very beautiful thing here in india also there is one regime change that happened hmm. this is from congress to bjp <laughs> it is actually a regime change that happened but how peacefully it happened Mm-hmm. no muslim died no gen- no muslim genocide happened peacefully it happened and even congress party is having their own respect they are getting equal number of votes okay this is mm-hmm. number one top big lessons learned if at all congress does a regime change or us deep state does a regime change it will be particularly hindu genocide mm-hmm. best example is bangladesh if at all they do a regime change in uh, um bharat also they do they induce this fear mongering is very important for them okay and th- these idiots talk about peace in the nation all the quotes that they say in the twitter and all the, the statements is uh, establish peace and harmony between the communities right yeah but these are the people hmm. there are lots of twitter ids which were created on the day of violence and yeah. which with zubair retweeted yeah <laughs> so they are trying to whitewash the hindu genocide happening in bangladesh yeah what will they achieve by doing so this zubair and the eco stuff money they got paid money and they have to work extra hours and you know it goes uh, just like that they want to protect he will also has uh, a team and an ecosystem he hmm. will is beautiful <laughs> nowadays so okay. uh, what the three major forces behind the bangladeshi Okay. Number one, number one is of course everybody knows the, the U.S. deep state. Sheikh Hasina herself said uh, U.S. has an eye on the military base. Same <clears throat> Martin Sailor. Yeah, she denied the military base over there, and then they went to Ego, and then they wanted to do something over there. And then the most important thing is uh, the Bangladesh Nationalist Party, and then the Jamaat Islami Hind. These two parties created a lot of damage over there. They uh see the the party uh the canadian government some government declared the bnp as a terrorist organization yeah canadian high court court yeah yeah canadian so courts. exactly so they did they have the, such a background and even uh, sheikh hasina banned jamaat e islami hind because they involved yeah. in some student torture and all these things in the past and these two organizations took over a lot of background activity must have been happened if you look at uh, this army chief uh, wakaru zaman uh, when he did not open fire itself you can understand what level they went in the background uh, how they were all united 
the bnp walker zaman and then the jamaat e islami hind and then the students guy a lot of things are happening and you know she lost she lost control over it she had to fly away so recently somewhere i have seen a statement from uh, sheikh asina that she is saying that i will come back yeah. maybe modi ji has given her some boost <laughs> See, actually, for a co- uh, common man's perspective, mm. only this year elections happened in Bangladesh. Sheikh Hasina yeah. returned to power with a brutal majority, two-third majority, and Absolutely. within some month, a uh, month span of time, her government fell just like that, like pack of cards. How yes. did the deep state and the local forces made it happen? This is just pulling off a blinder. Exactly. First thing is they have a, a plan to uh, create a Christian state out of Myanmar and Bangladesh. that did not work out and then they propose this uh, re-elections nonsense to shake us in other we will i mean the thing is there is something known as information control you should explore this in google okay. uh, in google itself if you uh, type a uh, particular word for example swastik uh, there is a uh, i i forgot that page name there is a data where it provides in how many places how many times this particular word is being used okay you know that this is how they got the records of uh, this language language conflict in ukraine right native language speakers versus uh, foreign language speakers and that's how they employed this nato and other there's something known as this information control which the deep state uh, is employing in creating this warfare in all the countries so whatever happened in bangladesh is just this so they uh, created a story saying that bangladesh elections are not fair not fair not yeah. fair in the entire world and they got an impression in the public that uh, we have to go for re-elections yeah, what i am afraid of is the same pattern i can see in india too modi ji won the elections through through election rigging the elections were not fair evm fraud etc now yes. when we look at india we get the same uh, fear of what happened in bangladesh may happen in india too because the same pattern is being repeated what's your take mallikarjun karji karge is the person who is uh, almost declared that in next month uh, we are going for re-elections <laughs> yeah. next month for re-elections <laughs> but uh, here the situations have increased and you know um, see the problem is just before elections they banned my channel exactly just before elections they banned my channel now i am in this uh, doing with this red petition in amravati high court and this is been dragging like crazy and absolutely no support from ministry you see if if it minister says hey bloody youtube just put back the string channel they must put it because it's just a company making profits and government has full authority on it i don't understand why they're not uh, doing it i don't know uh, ministry is probably so that's why we were consistently insisting the necessity of a national system the necessity uh, yeah. to influence the system and the necessity yeah. to uh, of the government to support individuals like you and me exactly see the uh, common man's appearance the common man's uh, perception is the moment you see somebody in republic tv or some mainstream media in the panel of you know this debate kind of a mm. panel and then talking something they think it's profound mm. but that is <laughs> that is absolutely bullshit if you look at rahul gandhi uh <laughs> sitting leg up on leg and then talking saying that uh, people us forces in- should intervene in india uh ah. so that is that is where people's perception is and then its uh, responsibility lies in you and me to actually educate people in all this mm-hmm. simple things did you expect that bjp would uh, lose its majority and it will it would require its alliance partners to support uh, bjp for forming the government see a lot of unexpected things happened this term actually what happened in uh, up is totally totally blew my eyes i mean it's just another uh, question along with this and yeah. what's the role of george soros behind this and how he planned this to happen see george soros is an expert in planning this uh, he actually wanted uh, india's crash and government's uh, modi government crash in 2014 itself he made a statement saying that uh, the um, uh, corporate taiku nadani and then uh, mm-hmm. india nationalism hindutva is rising and then 
uh, we must destroy it a lot of uh, destabilization meetings have happened in the name of uh, what is that uh, dismantling global hindutva yeah dismantling global hindutva and i think it they, happened in the us right yeah see uh, george soros's job is there is one protest which happened against adani in australia stop <laughs> adani campaign in australia and when we okay. trace back the root george soros is the guy who funded this George Soros is the guy who funded Delhi riots. The moment uh, the government took over, they introduced something known as CAA. Mm. There were protests all over. Shahin Bagh protest, you know. It. Soros is the guy who funded it. From then on, I am investigating and then I am uh, analyzing things. And then when uh, we have a team, research team, and Jay Patel, everybody knows. He is a very good researcher. And previously, I had a brilliant guy in my team. Unfortunately, we had to part it. And after that, uh, when we looked at every transaction, every right, Agnivi rights, uh, Article three seventy, right, everything if you take, it connects directly to George Soros. Hmm. And he is a guy who has a record of funding protests in every part of the world, even farmers' protest. Exactly. Without George Soros, it wouldn't have happened. <laughs> and do you think he has achieved uh, his goal like was he able to weaken modi ji's government just by reducing its numbers yeah because he that's was, the common perspective he he was able to uh, reduce the power of the government he was able to reduce uh, create a dent in a lot of developments in the country but he failed terribly in completely collapsing modi ji's government attempts have been happening since many years and many terms even this term also they did not expect modi ji to take over they wanted congress to come into power they failed they will eventually fail for another 50 years also they will not come back because this is very important for people to observe that for the first time the uh, in india for the prime minister not just the uh, physical forces not just the human beings but the nature itself is supporting them otherwise it wouldn't happen is sadhana bowed on can you Guru. just elaborate on that part for the common public to understand see if you look at uh, after the elections are uh, gone after the elections are lost actually i have take, taken that screenshot of a picture of modi ji that also i'll send you yes. the man is smiling like you know such an ease in his face even even though he took the backstabbing of his own people reduce in voting uh, number of percentage for one person they said like you know 400 par everybody was campaigning and all these things but end result is like totally bullshit it is almost like you know thank god we made it kind of a victory mm. there was always it, even till the last moment there was doubt right even mm. after such a big uh, loss uh, during the parliament session modi ji was smiling that is modi ji <laughs> <laughs> no everybody could like, you look at yogi ji's face also there was total depression and he is like you know clapping the bench like this but modi ji <laughs> there is not even a single i mean this doesn't happen because of a training from your you know team a professional yes. and, you know, this happens only because there is like yogi ji's forces and uh, support from the nature itself see i need to ask you this differently because uh there are lots of people asking you in the comment section why do you trust modi ji blindly so blindly uh, you are trusting modi ji like a mountain in tamil we say mala pola nambarde why do you do so what's the reason there are, there are so many points which i can explain if you make yogi ji as a prime minister which i also said i want yogi ji as a prime minister but after i studied a lot then i understood modi ji is the correct person for india because there is one style of beating uh, that you know if i uh, if i beat you you will not even realize that i have beaten you and <laughs> even after one week even if i tell you i am the one who kicked you on your back you will say no 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 you are a good guy this is okay. modi ji style of kicking people <laughs> and he is doing it very professionally all the time but yogi ji is like you know straight forward when you open up gun shoot in front of eyes and then this is one style of handling things and yogi ji is good at but this will not work for a prime ministership as a prime minister modi ji is doing it you know it's like beyond human level is godly he is <laughs> the way he is you still have the trust unbroken unshaken unshaken there is literally there is uh, no other 
literally there is no other person in the entire nation who is capable of what modi ji is doing who is capable of how modi ji is handling it in the entire bjp also maybe in future i really appreciate many ministers to actually learn and you know uh, take charge of the country but i mean to say modi ji is unbeatable <laughs> so after elections bjp seems to be be it true or not true but it seems to be so weak they are, they have become so weak in their morale their morale has come down and there is a common perception that see in 2024 there was a perception that modi would win and uh, charles par slogan was made but even then they were able to make only 240 but in 2029 yeah. there is no certainty uh even congress could win congress is just in the uh, brink of winning to are yes. there any slightest of possibilities of congress returning to power in 2029 100% there are chances and i don't want to make funny there statements. are chances yeah i don't want Actually, to make this funny this is a really shocking statement from you <laughs> exactly no uh, i don't want to, even last uh, meeting there so many podcasts with uh, dharma raghavan and all i said that uh, this 400 is not happening number i am the only person who said 400 and all is like impossible <laughs> so uh, because it is not um, good to reveal the facts but i mean to say see one bharat jodo yatra he did such a comedy yatra he did <laughs> but still you see the magic that happened karnataka they won telangana they won uh, even in some yeah even in tamil nadu also they made a significant you know uh, but tamil nadu is a different case but i mean to say it worked somehow and what makes you think these people congress which is actually on the death bed yeah. if you are on the death bed you will pour out all the money you have and then you try something right yeah and then uh, yeah so, the point is are we underestimating rahul gandhi and congress party and who is behind them are we uh, just are closing our eyes and just calling him pappu he doesn't know anything yes are no, we underestimating is. rahul gandhi we are not underestimating he is actually a pappu but the people <laughs> behind that we are underestimating <laughs> yeah. rahul gandhi is a good uh, is a very good guy for bjp actually <laughs> so everybody right knows <laughs> everybody knows that uh, even rahul gandhi campaigns bjp will get a lot of votes see if at all if he is not a pappu because of bharat jodo yatra itself they should have won they did not make it because he is a pappu so uh, i mean to say people who are behind rahul gandhi uh, are very pop i mean the george soros and all these people they have a clear cut track record of destroying nations hmm. people must understand people don't know this people don't know this and uh, one channel which exposed everything the string channel they deleted and uh, made a complete buffoon of my channel there are in tamil nadu also there are a lot of people who troll me <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. that is what uh, the reality is so according to you what course correction would you suggest to bjp so that they can again become the election winning super giant um, sort of thing very good question first thing they should focus on is invest on social media bloody invest on social media which you already have did i mean in 2014 they used social media to the core they were very good at it but this mm-hmm. time you know you have, might have seen uh, jp nadda statements of uh, saying we don't need yeah. access this is a huge it was such a shocking statement yeah this this they have to correct it and even now they are not doing it they are they are not i mean uh, even i have my friends right they are saying you know we did not receive even 10000 rupees from bjp itself we will not make it. they are saying we will not make any videos i mean to say i mean in the people's perspective also this must change just because you know the government is not supporting you you don't expect support from volunteers they have a lot of work to do and uh, even if you are not able to trust blindly on the government you do it for hindutva right you do it for sanatan dharma sanatan dharma you do it for bharat you do it for the nation exactly you don't do it for a political party bjp mm-hmm. what is bjp for you so this emotion that people should say, otherwise you know if congress comes to power uh, uh, they will slaughter everybody out first thing they will go for it since you are journalists and bureaucrats mm-hmm. they will finish this they should do and also like anand ranganathan said in many videos uh, party should actually work on um, safeguarding the hindutva which the bjp party is not doing yeah If there is a yeah. leader which yeah karyakarta is a new accusation on modi that after coming to power 
after 2014 he has become pseudo secular the government has become pseudo secular bjp is just talking about him to or they are not even talking about him to they have just become another congress like party <laughs> all your opinion on it no no i uh, i mean on modi ji i don't agree with this because his only yeah. perspective is if there is a change happens it has to happen in a peaceful way and he is committed to uh, doing this yeah. and you know if he had to do it in a blunt way there are already so many rafales in place <laughs> he has already purchased so many rafales in place if he has to do it in a blunt way i mean overnight we have seen what happened in uh, when he was a chief minister in gujarat okay so people just shut up i mean they don't make this comments and because he wanted to he has a lot of plan for another 50 years the party is ready and the next generation leaders are everybody is so uh, ready over that so this is not fair to uh, comment on him like that but party as such we very well know that there are so many dumb ministers in the party every party has its own share of goons right even bjp has its own share of corrupt le- leaders and uh, this is a open playground for anybody to you know fix it so, so my final question so what should we as public uh, should do to prevent bharat from becoming another bangladesh get your weapon ready <laughs> there is a war <laughs> war is coming in every video i used to say war is war. Uh, be prepared yeah, i mean you should you should really carry weapons weapons in the sense see uh, two three incidents really uh, hit me very hard women are being paraded in the road and not paraded dragged in the car naked and then to check whether she is dead or not they are beating with stones hmm. and then uh, you know after a military officer is being killed they open his underwear and check whether he is uh, a muslim kafir or not right to this yeah. level if it to this level if it goes what what better uh, precaution or safeguarding is uh, bloody the I mean when somebody comes on you 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 need you don't need sri krishna to come and save you right you yourself should save save yourself and then uh, look at the uh, population of bharat obviously the government cannot provide that much military support to safeguard and protect people when there is a street riots happen you must carry your own weapons and then safeguard yourself from the animals who are coming to butcher you they should be treated like animals only if a lion pounces upon you uh, will you read bhagavad gita to kick them out you should actually uh, wage a war on it right it's going to be a war situation and one very important thing for the last uh, comments islamists have declared war upon us do you know this they have yeah. declared a war upon us in kashmiri files movie you might have seen all they are waiting for is to get a call from the masjid jihad call vandashina every city in india will become gaza not just gaza they, israel has only one gaza in india they have every city i'll uh, i'll send uh, you one you have a substantial evidence uh, on this i'll i'll send you the clip molvi sure. himself molvi himself says in bangladesh that every madrasa is a cantonment for gazwa hin mm. every ma- madrasa every madrasa means you can understand how many madrasas in tamil nadu in every city it's a cantonment yeah. for gazwa gazwa hin kashmir files movie is about that it is not about uh, spreading hate on one particular community i mean you display that video which is uh, sure. already done by the i'll also. add this uh, i'll retweet it in the sir islam pankhira tader chok ber kore felbe bhati bangla re ek inch jaygay jodi ke aggression chalate ashe bangladesh er prottekti madrasa cantonment e porinoto hoye jabe sokol musalman sashastro bhabe shenabahiner sathe kaade and also i mean this is a very alarming situation uh, if at all it comes out in uh, bangladesh i'm not blaming the muslim community i'm blaming the political parties who are actually invigorate in the communal rights the congress party they will eventually lead the hindu genocide Okay. So in this episode, we have detailedly discussed about Bangladesh, 
bharat yeah. modi ji everything so actually thank you so much for your time thank you for discussing in detail and exposing hindenburg and we wish for so, uh, the recovery of your channel very soon very soon your channel will be restored and you are doing a fantastic job uh, stay in touch we will do a series of video with you on our channel so thank you so much for this episode anna sure sure anna thank you so much pesh tamra pesu for inviting truth to people you are doing a great job and lot of encouragements and blessings so much thank you so much thank you so much nandri ulaga tamil sondangalukku vanakkam na rajavel nagarajan பேசு தமிழா பேசு வலையொலியுடைய வளர்ச்சிக்கு நீங்களும் உறுதுணையா இருக்கணும்னு நினைச்சீங்கன்னா இந்த வீடியோடைய டிஸ்கிரிப்ஷன்ல இருக்கக்கூடிய ரேசர் பே லிங்க கிளிக் பண்ணுங்க அந்த லிங்க்ல போயிட்டு உங்களுக்கு விருப்பமான தொகையை பேசு தமிழா பேசுவனுடைய வளர்ச்சிக்கு உங்களுடைய பங்களிப்பாக நீங்க கொடுக்கலாம் நன்றி வணக்கம்